Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to take a look at rig control with Pat Winlink. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Okay, before we get into actually installing anything in this tutorial, let's talk a little bit about rig control with Pat Winlink. Uh, it does have a bit of a weakness. Uh, rig control, when you install it and get it configured uh, correctly for uh, Pat Winlink, will only change the frequency of the radio. It will not change the mode of the radio. So let's say you're having a QSO on 40 meters in lower sideband and you decide to uh, wrap that up and make a wind link connection. You jump over to Pat, you key in everything correctly, plug in the frequency, hit the connect button. It's going to change the frequency, but you're still going to be stuck in lower sideband because Pat's not able to change that. And with wind link connections, they always happen on upper sideband. So uh, due to this, Typically, what I do is I'm using something like FL Rig to control my radio. So I'll go in, make the appropriate changes using FL Rig, so, uh, since it can do both the frequency and the mode. Uh, I'll use it. Then I open up PAT, and I will only uh, plug in the call sign and the transport mode. Uh, information that I need and then I'll go ahead and make a connection. I'll never enter any frequency information into PAT. Uh, so that's typically the way I run it. Uh, but if you do want full-blown or as close to full-blown rig control as you can get uh, with PAT, we're going to help you take care of that today. Now, with the software that we're about to compile, it's not only useful for uh, rig control inside of PAT. If you decide to start uh, getting into any custom bash scripts, then you can use uh, this to manipulate the radio through a bash script as well. So it's kind of got two purposes, and that's the reason I do have this installed on my system. I just don't have PAT uh, configured to utilize it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let me get that out of the way. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the web browser and we're going to come over to this website here. Now, this is the ham radio control libraries. Uh, this is the software that we're going to get installed. I'll leave a link to this website down in the description below for you guys. All right. Once you're on this web page, let's come down right here to the file section. Next up, let's come into this folder here, the Hamlib folder. Let's go ahead and click on 3.3, which is the latest version as of uh, this recording. We'll scroll down just a little bit, and we're looking for this file right here, hamlib-3.3.tar.gz. We're going to right-click on that and copy the link address. Let's go ahead and move over to our terminal window and let's go over to the downloads directory. Once we're in the downloads directory, let's use our wget command to grab that file and we'll paste in that link that we just copied. Now, note right here, it does put uh, this extra on the end of it, the forward slash download. So I'm just going to take that off and we'll go ahead and hit return to grab that file. Okay, let's clear the screen back out. Now, that is a tar file that we just grabbed. I'll run the ls command so we can see it. Uh, that's this file right here. Tar files are similar to zip files, so we need to untar it. So, we'll run the command tar-xzf. And then we'll just start typing that hamlib, uh, hit our tab key to autocomplete, and go ahead and hit the return button. Okay, if we run our list command again with ls, we'll see that we have a new directory here. So let's go ahead and move into that directory with cd space hamlib-3.3 forward slash. Hit your return key. And now we'll go ahead and start compiling 
this software. First command we need to run is dot forward slash configure. And guys, some of these will take quite a bit of time. Go grab your favorite coffee or other beverage. You'll probably uh, want to sip on that while we wait. Okay, once that does complete, the next command will be make. We'll go ahead and run that. Okay, and once that finishes up, let's run sudo make install. Hit return and give that just a couple of minutes to run. Last command we're going to issue is sudo ld config. Okay, we'll go ahead and clear the screen. And let's move back to our home directory with cd space tilde. Now, if you just wanted to use rig control with scripts uh, and not actually set it up in pat, you would be finished. However, if you want to set it up in pat, let's go take a look at how to do that. First thing we're going to do is come over to uh, the pat webpage, and that's getpat.io. Again, I'll leave a link for that down in the description below. Let's go over to the documents page. And let me see if I can make this just a little bit larger for you. All right. And we want to come right here to where it says rig control. So we'll click on rig control. Let's start scrolling down the page. Now, here he's talking about setting it up. That's what we just did. Uh, we, uh, we just compiled it from source instead of getting it from the uh, repositories. The reason I like to do that is that way, uh, if the repositories don't have the very latest uh, Hamlib software, if we compile from source, we know we're always getting the latest. All right, so let's scroll on down a little bit to this section here. And this is... Uh, running rig control. Okay, so the first thing he tells us to do is run this command right here. So let's pop back over to our terminal window and run rigctl space hyphen l and hit return. This is going to list out all of the radios that Hamlib can support. So I'm going to scroll back up. I know roughly where mine is, should be up on the top of the list. There we go. All right, so I'm looking for this line right here. You'll see that this is for the Yezu FT-857. Right over here, this very first line is what I need to know. So that's my rig number. Uh, so rig 122. So keep that in mind. We're going to need that information uh, in a few minutes. So let's go ahead before we leave here, and I'm just going to type clear to clear that out of the screen. Let's head back over to the website, and I'm going to bypass this. We'll come back to this in just a second. We're going to go ahead and do the pat configuration for my particular rig. So I'm going to come right here in this uh, box, this code box. Oh, I actually missed something. You got to get this entire line right here. So I'm going to copy that, come back over to the terminal, and let's go ahead and type pat configure. That'll open up the configuration file. You'll see the information that we filled out. Uh, I believe that was video one of the series where I've got my call sign. You would give it your password, your locator, and the HTTP address. Let's start scrolling down. We're looking for this line right here. Hamli hamlib underscore rigs. Let's come to right here and let's paste in that information that we just copied. Okay, now right here where it says my precious rig, I'm going to take that out. This is the name of the rig. And guys, you can name this whatever you want to name it. Uh, I'm just going to use 857 because it's uh, quick, easy, and gives me reference as to which radio it is. Let's come on down. Now, we'll go ahead and configure the AX25 section for rig control. Uh, this will allow you, when you're running uh, AX25 connections for packet work, this will allow Pat to control the rig for that as well as RDOP, which will be the other one. So, right here... We're under the AX25 section. We've come down to where it says rig, 
and between these quotation marks, I'm going to type 857. And that is what I named my radio. If you named your radio something different, you'll put whatever you named your radio here. Scrolling on down, we're going to uh, skip this serial TNC connection. I'm going to skip the Winmore uh, section because I don't use either one of those. And I'm looking for RDOP, which is right here. And in that section, right here is where we're going to come down and go ahead and put... Well, I think I just skipped past it. There we go. All right, we're going to put the 857 there again. Once we've done that, let's press Control X, Y, and Enter to get out of it. Okay, so let's head back over to the web page. Let's grab this line right here, and we'll go through this and kind of explain this. But I'm going to go over and paste this in. So what this is, this is going to start the rig control daemon. Uh, you can tell that it's a daemon with the dash D, I'm sorry, the uh, D at the end of rig control right here. Then we're going to say hyphen M. That's the model number of radio. Remember, mine was 122, so that comes in here. Next, we need to tell it where our cat cable is located. Mine's plugged into the USB, so that's the hyphen R. And then the forward slash DEV forward slash TTY USB zero. And then the last thing, this hyphen S, is the baud rate of our serial connection. And that's 4800 in my case, and it matches what I've set up in the menu system of my rig. We'll go ahead and press return. It's just going to return to the next line. It's not going to dump us back out to the command line, but this tells us that this is running and waiting for connections. Okay, at this point, I'm going to press Control shift t on my keyboard, and that's just going to give me a new tab. So I've still got the rig control daemon running in this tab. And in the new tab, I'm going to run sudo system ctl restart pat at pi. Now, the pi is your username. Uh, so if you set yours up, you know, when we were setting up the uh, system services in uh, one of the previous videos, if you set yours up uh, with a different username because you're, you're not using the default pi username, you'll have to change that here. But if you're still running pi as your username, this will work perfect for you. We'll go ahead and hit return. And it'll dump us back out to the command line. Let's head over to the Pat mailbox now. And you can see right here that we have the dial frequency of the radio. So it went ahead and read the radio and can see that it is uh, the radio is sitting at 7.078. Okay, so now when we are ready to make our connection, we'll click Action, Connect, I'm going to choose RDOP for my transport mode. And I'm going to enter the call sign K0SI. And then for the frequency, I'm going to enter 7102. We'll go ahead and hit the connect button. And you'll see the radio. Whoops, looks like I forgot to start my RDOP modem. Let's try that again, guys. Uh... Let's see, I'm going to minimize all of this. Come out to the screen where we created our, our uh, shortcut. We'll double-click on that. Click Execute in Terminal. We'll give this just a second to get up and running, and then we'll head back over to the patent uh, mailbox and try that again. All right, so we see some input peaks coming. All right, so let's try that one more time. Let's hit Connect, RDOP for our transport, K0SI for our target, 7102 for our frequency. We'll go ahead and hit the connect button again, and this time we should see that the rig is QSYing to 7102, and it's starting to make that connection. All right, guys. Well, I hope that helps you get rig control working on your system. Uh, I kind of hope it helps you make a decision on which direction you want to go uh, with rig control. Do you want to try to do it in PAT? Had you rather just stick with FL rig? Uh, personally, I use FL rig uh, and, and just skip it all together in PAT. Anyway, hope this helps you out. 
Be sure to give us a thumbs up, click that subscribe button before you head off, and we will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.